Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach Rizet with BuildBox. In this video, I'm going to show you the Rush Ball template, and I'm going to teach you how this template works. So let's take a quick look at it right now. So this is the Rush Ball template. Basically, we have a little, well, instead of a ball, we've got a square here, and we have this little platform or this little object that's moving left to right, and we have to time it correctly so that it hits the slot just right, and then we can move on to the next scene. And if you miss, then your character dies. So let me show you how this is set up real quick. So we are inside our first scene here, and this is the start of our game. And I'm actually gonna break this down into three parts because it's a little tricky. The first part is how this character, this main character here is set up. The second part is how this obstacle here or the goal of our game is set up here. And the third part is how the character is defeated if the character or if the player misses the goal. So let's go ahead and take a look at the character first. So I'm gonna go over here to my menu over here on the left and I'm gonna select my character. And then over here on the right, we're gonna check out and see how this is set up. We've got a couple advanced moves and this is really the secret to this character. We've got a couple advanced moves over here on the right and we've got some damage. So let's go ahead and first let's talk about damage. Anytime the character comes in contact with another obstacle or a platform or anything like that, any object, it will destroy that object, or at least it will, it might not destroy it, but it'll do a damage of one. And if that thing has a health of one, or if it doesn't have any health at all, then it's going to be defeated. So that's what damage does in this scenario. And then next, we've got this first advanced move. And what it does is it sets the linear velocity of this character at the very start. You can see here that the event says on start. It sets the linear velocity to zero and zero. So it just keeps the character right where it is and doesn't move it along. And then we've got that object that moves back and forth. And that's really what's doing the movement. But when you click on the screen, the character goes flying forward and it hits the object or it might not hit the object. And so this is what the other advanced move is doing. Over here, you can see that the event is set to a button and it says a character button. And we'll find out what that is right now, right after this. But what it does is it replaces the operation and it changes the linear velocity in the Y direction to 350, which is why it goes firing upwards and it goes right towards the goal or the object right above it. And that's really how the character is set up. It sets it up with a speed of 350 and that's how it goes moving forward. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that character button is set up in the UI. So I'm gonna go up here to my top left corner and I'm gonna click on my menu editor and go to my game mind map and then I'm gonna click on my world UI. Okay, so there's a couple things that are going on here. One, we've got this giant character button over here in the center and you can see it's nice and stretched out so that you can click anywhere on the screen and it responds. So let's go ahead and select the character button over here from our layer tree, the layer hierarchy over here on the left. And you can see here that this, that this character button is set to a component action. And so that's why it says character button when there is an advanced move over there for the character. So let's go ahead, and that's because it's still set to character button here in the name, but let's change the name of it to move up. Okay, great. So now we've got move up as the character button. And if we go back to our mind map and go back to our world, we'll see here that if we select our character and we go down and we check out the advanced move, it says the event is set to none, and that's because we changed the name of the character button. So now we need to change it to move up, and then we'll be right back where we were. So there's another thing I wanted to show you on this world UI. So I'm gonna go back to this world UI real quick. And that's these images, these little black arrows, and that's going to be part of the third thing that I'm gonna go over, and that's how the character is defeated. But I want you to see here that these black triangles are just decorations, okay? When you set it up here in the UI, it's not gonna have anything to do with the gameplay, at least these images won't. So what they do is they just show you where you basically don't wanna go. When you fire your character upwards, you don't want it to hit the black triangles up above. And so that's what's going on there. So now I'm gonna go back to my mind map, I'm gonna go back to my world, and then now let's take a look at how this obstacle and this goal is set up here in the middle. Because now you know how the character works, but how does this work exactly? 
So, and you know what? One, you know, one last thing before we move on past the character. If you click activate connection mode, and you can do so by clicking this button here, or by hitting the option key on your Mac keyboard and holding it down, you can turn on activation mode, and you can see that Danny has set up a couple particle emitters, and he connected them up to the character so that when e in each of the scene there is a particle emitter that travels with the character and it looks really really nice okay so now let's move on to the obstacle thing so the first things first we've got this path that is set up right here in the middle and it has one point here you can see that this end point and then it's got the start point so let's click on this path and see what the heck's going on with this thing so right now this play mode the play mode for this path is set to ping pong and if any of you haven't played ping pong it really goes back and forth back and forth and that's kind of this setup so whenever this object or whenever this asset moves into the path and it joins the path it's going to start moving back and forth back and forth in ping pong back and forth okay and we check to see which asset is actually affected by this and right now it's set to um, assets and then we've got it set to all assets and we could have it set to um, goal which is what this little obstacle is right here but it's it's good enough to set this path to all because it doesn't really matter we could be more specific or we could leave it as all both will work but some people might ask okay so we're gonna hit this obstacle and it's ping-ponging back and forth but then how does hitting that obstacle move you into the next scene because we've actually got six more scenes here and they all kind of do different things and you can see that the paths in the ping-pong movement is a little bit different on all the scenes and so how does it move how does it progress the player? How does it moving to the next scene? And let's take a closer look at this goal object to find out. So I'm gonna go over here to my left onto my objects menu. I'm gonna select my goal. And then you can see over here, there's a default animation and then there's a blank defeated animation, which looks very suspect. So let's go ahead and check out the edit button here. Let's check out the defeated animation and see what the heck is going on here. Okay, so I'm opening up the defeated animation and what do you know? There's this handy dandy next checkpoint action that is released as soon as the character or as soon as that goal object is defeated. And so when the character does that damage of one to the object, then it's going to go ahead and defeat that object and it's going to release this next checkpoint. And so what ends up happening is I'm going to exit out of this animation editor, but the next checkpoint will send you over here into the next scene and you'll be able to pick up another checkpoint. And so I, I clicked on scene one over here and you can see here in scene one that there is a set checkpoint and it's this little star icon that we've got here. And, and you can see over here in the actions, it's got this little star and you don't ever actually see this star because the second that you move into the scene, you're automatically collecting it. And so you never actually see it. And honestly, we could have it be, um, have an opacity set to zero, so it's invisible too, but it doesn't really matter. Now, so once you move on to the next scene, you've set another checkpoint and it's not going to go back. Now let's quickly check out how this next checkpoint is set up. So I'm gonna go over here to my left, I'm gonna select next checkpoint, and you can see that it's an action type, but there is no image for it. So let's go ahead and check this out and see how this is set up. Okay, so there is an image there, but the opacity is set to zero. So if I just change that opacity to one, all of a sudden it's visible again. But if I change it back to zero or anything less than zero, it'll also be invisible. And that's what we want. We don't want it to actually be visible. We don't want to see it. So I'm going to exit out of this. Now it's as easy. There's lots of different action types. There's coins, kill all enemies, invincibility, power up magnet, but there's also these great great checkpoint action types. And so this is what we use it for. We have the next checkpoint set up. And so what it does is it takes you to essentially the next checkpoint. And so that's how the obstacle over here in the middle is set up. It's got this path moving back and forth. The character moves up. It's got a damage of one. It destroys the goal. It releases the next checkpoint and it moves on to the next scene. Okay. But what happens if you miss? Okay. What's going on here with this little red line and everything set up? And it's actually really simple is what's 
what's happening here is this little red line means whenever the character hits this red line, it's going to defeat the character. And you can toggle this line really easily by just clicking on it and changing the colors. Okay, and red means, you know, no go. Basically, if the character hits that, the character is going to be defeated. So what ends up happening is if the character misses this object or misses this platform as it's moving back and forth across and it hits this red line, it's going to defeat the character and it'll be a game over situation. So that's how Rush Ball works. And this is a kind of a complicated uh, template. It's a simple game, but you can do a lot with this. Imagine moving this character in a circle and you needed to time it so that it was going inwards or something like that. Kind of like the game Knife Hit by Ketchup or Pigeon Pop by Fortify is another one that came out recently that is somewhat reminiscent of this. And you can have a path or some sort of obstacle here in the middle that's spinning. You can have a bunch of objects that you need to hit. So this is a really cool gameplay type and you might want to play around with it and experiment with checkpoints especially. So I hope you liked this tutorial and you thought it was useful. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. All right, thanks boxers.